Buongiorno and welcome to Monza for highlights from the 7th round of the 2023 VCO Formula Sim Racing World Championship. My name is Edward Hunter and here's all of the driver changes going into the Italian Grand Prix. For the first time since Silverstone, RHE Esports are back in action with Adam Maguire being joined by Visceral Esports' Martin Maguli. This means that Frenchman Loic Moynier is once again promoted to fill in a vacant seat at Visceral Esports. Adam Pimfez fills in at Arnage Brabham for Mika Hakimi and TX3 promote Peter Vagapov to make his World Championship debut in place of Yannick Bok. Finally, debutant Balaz Rumenyik steps up to fill the second seat at Race Clutch. Janos Braxok took his second pole position of the season ahead of points leader Jernay Simincic and led away for Arnage Brabham. There was a battle for third behind them as Colin Sport got alongside Dennis Jordan's Ferrari exiting the Retifilio chicane, getting the inside line for Curva Grande as Jake Denahan did the same to Davin Rockcheck just behind in fifth. Moynier had gotten past Petter Brilliac for 11th but a squabble between Williams and Maguli allowed the Alpine drive to go down the inside at Lesmo 1 to retake the place. Moynier then found himself under attack from Adam Maguire, the sole driver to start on the soft compound tyre. He was able to sweep around the outside going into Ascari, but behind there was calamity as Damien Skovron went up the inside of Jan Granqvist and spun the Super Venturi around, creating a major roadblock. On lap 2, Brilliac attacked Williams for 10th, going all the way around the outside the Royal Blue Driver at the first chicane. Lap 4 and Brilliac dispensed with Maguli for 9th as Maguire used his softs to attack Williams, who found himself losing traction as well as his 11th position. Lap 5 and the slipstream games had begun with Simoncic moving to the inside to keep reigning champion Spork at bay. Maguire's soft soon started to wear and he was the first to stop on lap 10 relinquishing 11th. Meanwhile the top 4 had congregated together as Braxock break late into the Retifilio and Spork attempted to slot himself up the inside of the delayed burst car to no avail. Jordan was keeping a watching brief on the top three until Simoncic used his battery to get alongside Braxock on lap 15. The pair went wheel to wheel but Spork was too eager on the power and spun out of control, dropping himself back to ninth behind his teammate as Simoncic assumed the lead. A lap later, Brilliac challenged Alex Siebel for seventh into Della Roggia but found himself stranded on the outside and cutting across the chicane, creating an opening for the other Alpine of Spork to nip up the inside and begin his fight back. Jordan had become bored of staring at the back of Braxock's Arnold Brabham and made a move for second on lap 19, but his ambition to lay higher as Simoncic's caution into turn 1 allowed the Ferrari to slot itself alongside in a risky manoeuvre which the civilian did well to repel. Brilliac had pit while this was going on and a lap later he was followed in by Braxock and Spork. They all emerged behind Maguire who had undercut them by 10 laps. Mrokchek and Michi Hoyer pit on lap 21 as Braxock comfortably cleared the RHE of Maguire. The two burst cars emerged in between the Alpine pair, although Spork attempted an ambitious move around the outside at the Retifilio and had to cut across the chicane before conceding the place back to Hoyer. Simoncic had to respond immediately and was followed in by the NX27 of Denehan. The triple champion emerged alongside the pink machine of Braxok, with the Hungarian only just having enough of an undercut to retake the net lead of the race. Finally, Jordan pitted at the end of lap 22 as his teammate Siebel stayed out. The Ferrari looked like he was going to re-emerge in third, but Brilliac had other ideas. The Croatian slotting around the outside opportunistically as just behind Maguire continued to struggle with tyre wear and found himself under attack from Rokchek, who set him up for a move through the Curva Grande. Denahan was determined not to waste any time and immediately followed the Polish driver through into the top seven as Simoncic used push to pass to snatch a lead back from Braxok. Siebel finally pit on lap 24, relinquishing first place and re-emerging 10th behind Maguire who had just been overcome by Spork. A lap later and Jordan slotted himself up the inside of Brilliac for third in a clinical and efficient pass. Hoyer was the only driver to switch to the mediums but he found himself going backwards as Spork snatched 7th place away from him. Lap 30 and Mrokchek and Denahan went either side to the now struggling Brilliac before battling it out for fourth. Denahan going the long way around and banging wheels with the burst driver before decisively moving ahead. Immediately behind the Alpine swap positions with Spork now ahead of Brilliac once more. 
It was go time for Jordan on lap 33 as he got alongside Braxock for second. However, the Arnold Brabham driver decided to fight back, going side by side with the Ferrari through Curva Grande and forcing Jordan to use his battery to get ahead into Del Roggia, the squabble giving Simicic some crucial breathing space. On lap 34, Denahan picked his moment to pass Braxock for third place. Hoyer had had enough on his mediums, switching back to the hards for his final stint. Siebel took 7th away from Brilliac on lap 35, but two laps later Braxock repaid the favour on Denahan as the two leaders began to break away from them. Denahan, Spork and Brilliac made their final stops for mediums on lap 39, resurfacing a few seconds behind Hoyer. The German was being held up for position by Sander Callas and Moynier with the burst car passing the Estonian into Ascari. Braxock pitted on lap 40 followed by a drifting Williams. Hoyer used the slipstream to overcome Moynier and was comfortably ahead of the Arnage Brabham driver who had also been undercut by Denahan and Spork. With 11 laps to go, Jordan made his final pit stop for mediums. Crucially, he had been jumped by Hoyer as Mrokczyk also stopped behind him. Simoncic pit at the start of lap 43 right as Jordan was gearing up to pass Hoyer. The trio went free wide over the pit straight but it was the Ferrari that now led at Monza thanks to the undercut as Simoncic slotted into third. It wouldn't be that way for long however as Hoyer put up very little resistance to Simoncic going around the outside of him at a Curva Grande in the sister burst next view car. Lap 44 and Denahan saw a chance to go up the inside of Hoyer for third into the Retifilio which forced him to take the outside line on exit where he slid luridly and the pair made contact as the Irishman came out on top. Spork then immediately tried to follow through at Del Roggia and more contact was made as Hoyer spun out before being collected by Braxock who could not avoid him in time and lost his front wing. Mrokczyk on fresher mediums passed Spork with six laps to go and then immediately put pressure on Denahan at Del Roggia. Williams and Brilliac both passed the ailing Hoyer for 7th and 8th with the Brit having his best showing of the season. With four laps to go, Simicic overcame Jordan for the lead down the start-finish straight, which a German could do nothing to prevent. Meanwhile, Mrokczyk had saved his push to pass and went around the outside of Denahan at Curva Grande to complete a fabulous drive to third. In only his second World Championship appearance, Moynier had done well to keep Callas behind, but with three laps to go, the grand effect would not be denied, moving himself to 12th. On the final lap, Siebel was pushing to try and snatch fifth away from Spork, eventually getting through at Del Roggia. But up front, the lead Ferrari of Jordan could not make a move as Simicic held on to take his 28th career victory in third win at Monza. Mrokczyk made an even better day for Burst by taking his first podium since Bahrain. Denahan beat Siebel to fourth, but it was disappointment for Alpine with Spork and Brilliac sixth and seventh. Williams took his best result of the season yet in eighth ahead of Hoyer and Maguire after a questionable strategy and the rapid rookie Merguli. Bought the second RHE home in 11th, beating Callas, an excellent Moynier and the luckless Braxock with the point scorers being rounded out by Darius Andre, Stavros Mizadis, the race clutches of Remyik and Panzar, Vagapov and Cosmo Pesciuto. Leonos and Skovron rounded out the finishes despite having severe damage, but the same could not be said for Costas Van Vukas, Pinces, Mark Schluter, Danny Van Der Neet, Zoltzuks and Giordano Valeriano. It was another rough day for Superventure with both Lalu and Grankvist being eliminated from the order. With two races to go, Simoncic's win puts him 18 points clear of Jordan with 60 left up for grabs. Denahan falls to 33 points behind where Spork's hopes of retaining his title now look slim as he trails by 40 points. Mrokczyk is the last driver in mathematical contention, 53 points down. Burst next view now lead the team's table by a whopping 42 points with 110 left to play for as Ferrari pull 14 points clear of Alpine in second. Superventuri's double retirement means they've been leapfrogged by Burst Simplexity and Race Clutch. Simicic's second win of the season puts him in a position where he can potentially wrap up the title next time out if he wins again with Jordan 4th or below. With how competitive and unpredictable this season has been, can the title fight go down to the wire? We'll find out at the Japanese Grand Prix on the 1st of October, but from me, Edward Hunter, from the Temple of Speed, it's ciao ciao for now.